Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a Serum Tip and Trick tutorial video on ADSR. In this specific video, we are going to be talking about how you can make Serum sound more vintage, more analog, and we're going to be trying to create more of a mini Moog style saw sound in Serum as an example. So first thing, I just want to get this out of the way. If you guys want to skip ahead to actually the Serum tips and tricks, I will. I'm going to give you a little bit of background for those of you who like to be more thorough. Serum is a wavetable synth, and a synth like the Mini Moog or the Roland Juno 60 or the Odyssey ARP, those weren't wavetable synths. Those were those were voltage-controlled oscillator-style synths, or they were waveform-style synths. So Serum was never meant to be an emulation of those synths. It can definitely create sounds that harken back to like a Mini Moog or a, or a Juno, but it was, it was meant to be its own synth, kind of like Silent. Now, there are synths out there, like Yuhi Diva, and Monarch by Native Instruments that are trying to emulate a specific style sound of synth from yesteryear. So to get a synth like Serum or Massive or Silent to sound more like a vintage synth, you kind of have to know where that synth was meant to go in terms of how it was meant to be set up. Like, is it a wavetable? Is it a virtual analog? That sort of thing. And you need to be able to understand, have a little bit of an understanding of the synth that you're trying to compare it to. So we're going to be comparing it to the Moog because I have Monarch and we can compare the sound quite easily. So I have the default saw sound loaded up here inside of Monarch. It's just one oscillator. So let's play that real quick. Take note how it slightly jumps around in kind of like just overall sound. Right. Now let's compare that to Serum. Okay, Serum is much more consistent and straightforward, and you can visually see why. And we'll get to this in a little bit, but this saw waveform here, coming from the uh, default initialized preset in Serum, it's very digital. That's why it, people will describe synths like software synths as sounding digital. Not only are they occurring in the digital realm, but the ones and zeros allow for perfect shaped curves, right? This is completely straight lines, both up, down, and back up on the ramps. So if you look at like a like an old school waveform, which we'll, which we will in a minute, there are gonna be slight curvatures to it, and that's because like with a mini Moog, for instance, the oscillators were called VCOs or voltage controlled oscillators. The voltage wasn't always 100% the exact same. There'd be slight variations in multiple sections of the architecture of the synth, and that's what helps contribute to that really thick sound that a lot of people lust over in analog or vintage synths. So the first tip and trick when you're trying to get that style of sound. In something as flexible as Serum, start with as good a starting point as you can. Use a waveform or a wavetable that is emulated after the synth you're going after. Don't use a really digital sounding wavetable. It's just going to be harder for you. So we're going to look at that now. There are some analog waveforms that come with Serum, and those are pretty cool. But uh, like we have a pulse with modulation by Juno. Uh, we have some other ones here. But one of my favorite ones is DMS Classic Analog Waves. And these are just single cycle wave forms or single cycle wave tables from some really popular synths. We have the 303, the Alpha Juno, the ARP, the Juno 60, Mini Moog, and this is free, so you can just Google DMS Classic Analog Waves and it'll be there. So let's look at one of these Moog saws. Notice how it curves, right? Let's go to the editor here. See how this saw curves and there's a little bit of like noise occurring right there at the at the both the peak and the valley. So it's going to have a different sound. It's not going to be as consistent. Now I'm going to use a wavetable that I created that I really like. It's a uh, mini Moog saw or Moog saw. And you can see that it curves quite, quite a lot. So that's the first step. Use a wavetable or a waveform that makes sense for the style of synth that you're trying to create. A vintage style synth shouldn't be incredibly straight with its lines. Now with that in mind, you, those synths weren't wavetable synths. So scanning through your wavetable position that's not how you want to achieve the movement. You want to achieve movement by these differences here in the sound or in the waveform. So if I play this, it'll move around a pinch. Right, compare that to this. Okay, so that's that's step one. Step two, if you're going, or step one, one, one B, if you're trying to create a multi-voice, multi-oscillator sound that's trying to sound like a Juno 60 or like a ARP or a Mini Moog, try to stay away from using the unison. Try to just detune the oscillators with the fine pitch against each other. Because like a Mini Moog, for instance, didn't have that option. And if we look at Reactor's Monarch, you don't have that unison control. You just detune the sound against the other oscillator, oscillators. So 
that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to load up another uh, I guess we'll do the same waveform here. We'll load up the same wave wavetable. And we're going to detune against itself. So we're going to do the fine tuning maybe up to like 4 and down to 4 on this one. And now it'll sound a little bit thicker. Okay, now you can change the phase. So it doesn't sound as, again, as digital and as consistent. Let's change this to mono. So this is going to be a big difference. Let's copy this preset real quick. And then we'll compare it to the initialized saw. So this is the initialized saw, two oscillators fine-tuned the same way. Here's our analog vintage one. Right? It's not as harsh. It's not as digital. Now, I still like the digital sound. I'm not shitting on digital synthesis. I love it. But this is how you can start to get that sound. So now step three would be to uh, create some movement in the pitch. And this works for both one-voiced sounds or one oscillator or even two oscillators. So we're going to go the, to the second LFO. And we're going to create this just little ramp up and down. And you can add extra dots you can, or extra points in the LFO. And we're going to turn this up pretty fast, turn off the BPM. And we're going to modulate the fine pitch of both the oscillators, or maybe just one, depends on the sound. Just going to modulate just a little bit. If we do too much. It starts to border on vibrato, which is cool if you want to create a vibrato, but we're just trying to create some real subtle differences in the pitch to help thicken the sound and make it sound more like a voltage-controlled oscillator. So that's the third thing you can do. Now, the fourth thing is actually really cool. We're going to dive into the modulation matrix, and we're going to use a modulation source that you can't get using just the drag and drop style modulation. And that is the, right here, the note random. So we're going to choose note random. And what this will do is, note on random, is it will randomize upwards or downwards, depending on which, if you, either if you choose random one or random two, and you invert the, the way that it's going to move in the type right here, it's going to just change. It's going to randomize it. So we're going to go to the volume of oscillator A, and we're going to have it go up and down. So make sure it has arrows left and right. And we're just going to make it go like five. Then we're going to go note on random again. We're going to go to oscillator B's volume, and same thing, just maybe like to three or four. And this is going to be a slight difference, but it's enough to really kind of, well, anytime you're trying to create like these vintage analog so style sounds in Serum, these slight changes really add up. So let's listen to this. Let me exaggerate that effect so you can really hear it. Here how the volume starts to drop out. Well, you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to do that at all. Okay, you can use that idea even more. Let's use note on random one again. Let's look at oscillator A and see what we have here. Uh, let's look at, let's do the phase actually. So you could set this up obviously in the oscillator. So we maybe won't do that. We will do, let's do the fine tune as well. So we're going to have that just jump around just a pinch and that's going to be more randomized. So that's why I didn't detune these that high kind of leaving those pretty low because I wanted to use this as well on the detune. So we're going to go note on random again, and we're going to do B fine, and just do about one or two. And let's play this and check it out. Okay, and then also another thing I like to do, getting into the filters, try to stay away from like the the flanges and that sort of stuff, the just normal 
the low pass, high pass, that sort of stuff will get you closer. So we're going to go to a low pass 12 here. Going to turn the cutoff up all the way. Turn in, make sure oscillator A and B is routed into it. What I like to do is go to the matrix, and I like to do on note random. And I like to run that in to the filter, and I like to run it in to the drive. Just a little bit. All right, and that's going to sound way more analog and vintage than, than if we had two oscillators here inside a serum that were detuned against them, itself, and we were just running it with the stock saw waveform. All right, so one last thing before we uh, end the video. I'm going to turn off oscillator B, so it's just oscillator A. We still have the slight detune here, which we can actually turn back up because it doesn't really, doesn't really matter, but we'll turn up the amount that our LFO is modulating the pitch. So we still have that. We still have the uh, mod matrix doing the note on randoms. But let's compare that now to a saw wave in Monarch, which is a Moog emulation. Right? It's pretty darn close. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.